Understanding what the screw home mechanism is with relation to many gym movements is relatively crucial for understanding how to improve, we'll just say, your squat pattern, your lunge pattern, um, any position where your leg needs to be straight, uh, like a push-up, any real position at the top of the movement, say the top position of a single leg deadlift or one leg RDL. It's relatively important um, because it'll allow certain forces to be distributed throughout your body whenever you land, whenever you walk. So I'd say that understanding the screw mechanism is relatively important. Within the context of what it is, uh, at, at its easiest, there are three bones to be mindful of. Obviously, there's a whole body to be mindful of, but with respect to this specific mechanism, um, if we understand that there's the tibia and the fibula, and then how it relates to the femur, uh, we can begin to understand that there is a tibial plateau that the femur sits on. Um, within the tibial plateau, between the femur and the tibia, you have the lateral and the medial meniscus. So, for example, if there is a lack of full knee extension, perhaps we can begin to rule out certain tears uh, or anything that might happen in a disadvantageous way with respect to the, the ligaments as well, or even uh, insidious, I guess you could call it. So what we're gonna look at is what the actual orthokinematics of these uh, bones are and kind of, for the moment, disregarding uh, any of the meniscus issues that may occur. So if we're understanding the tibia and the femur, uh, if I take a side stance, for example, for you watching from the side, with respect to this thing called the stance phase and gait, as I begin to weight bear on this right leg, I have uh, my tibia is externally rotated, so it's open just a little bit, and then this is my femur, it's going to be internally rotated. Alright, so as I'm standing here, um, if I had both the tibia externally rotated and my femur externally rotated, this is what I would look like because I would be kind of falling to the side and then I would lose that ankle and foot position as a cause of it. So again, from the front this time, externally rotated relative to the ground and relative to the femur because I need to have some stability. If one is externally rotated, the other needs to be slightly internally rotated with respect to the stance phase. Um, that's how we achieve balance. Again, if I had both externally rotated on top of each other, I would begin to fall or I would begin to roll out into a different direction. Um, that's how you achieve stability. You have things stacked on top of each other. As you can see, if we understand it from that perspective, how am I going to get hip extension as I go forward? This is this way and then as I come forward, the femur is going to rotate and then fully lock into position thus or even screw into position using that screw hole mechanism as I go forwards. So from the side, I'm pull my shorts up a little bit, I'm here and then what I'm going to go for is as I step forward, I'm getting hip extension and then push off at the foot obviously. So one thing that we can begin to do is improve the orthokinematics on an isolated level uh, with respect to the total mechanism of the screw mechanism, uh, meaning many times individuals may lack certain motions about uh, a certain joint. So by restoring the joint motion, we can begin to integrate it within the total, meaning many times individuals are looking at a lack of hip internal rotation, but we're not really looking uh, hip internal or external in reality. They might be lacking hip motion, period, but in reality, there's a lot of things to be done with the tibia because the tibia allows the stance phase to occur in an authentic manner and the tibia fibula complex, the joint complex there, can allow for many different motions to occur at the ankle and foot and it also allows the femur to move on top of the tibia during the bigger movements, the bigger mechanisms. So there are tons of different videos and um, I have many of them uh, posted as well, but at, at the end of it, we need to improve how this guy moves in relation to this guy. So many times if somebody might be lacking extension, we might need to restore this tibial internal rotation uh, during flexion, uh, open chain movements for example, and during stance phase or closed chain movements, we need to learn and move how uh, within the extension uh, movements of the tibial on femoral motion. 
All right, so if I am seated here, I need to have, uh, maybe, maybe thinking about it, if my knee's flexed, I should have the ability to move well here. Okay? If I don't have a good ability and I tend to move my foot or toes or something along those lines, that is substituting the, the area here for the actual range of motion that needs to occur within the tibia fibula complex. So there might be muscles that we might need to inhibit, perhaps the peroneals, uh, the, the peroneal heads, the fibularis, obviously the gastroc and the soleus, how those kind of interplay between uh, the tibia and then the the backside of the femur as well. And then we also have the hamstrings because the hamstrings attach uh, to the lower leg as well. So those are a lot of different places that we need to look for tissue quality along with uh, how that tissue quality might play on the actual joints range of motion. So just some things to consider.